Welcome back, you guys. Thank you very much for joining me. And before we get going, uh, I just want to remind you, please, in the description box below, wherever you're watching this, hit the link, go to uh, Apple Podcasts, give me them five stars, give me the good ratings, and leave a review. I'm trying to get my podcast game up there. Cornell West continues on on Joe Rogan's podcast, and then they get to the topic of white supremacy. And now we can talk, talk about the policy and what's going on in 2019 moving forward, and where do we want this country to go? So let's take a minute and listen to him explain how white supremacy came to be, what it's all about. Just, just listen. You, you, you understand. If you look at the world through the lens of the masses of people who are poor and working people, what are the conditions under which they can have security from domination? What are the conditions under which they can have dignity by holding forms of oppression at arm's length? And for me, it's not an ism. You see, if mm. capitalism vis-a-vis -vis feudalism can generate liberties and freedoms, I'm for it. Mm. And that's precisely what the middle classes did when they broke from feudalism in Europe or broke from feudalism in other parts of the world. Right. You had to overthrow kings and queens in the name of personal liberties. But those personal liberties were confined too often to white brothers with property mm. and the white brothers with no property. They're either trying to hold on to their whiteness so they become like the white brothers with property or they make moral choices and said, I want to be a person of integrity. I want to fight with the folk who are being excluded. And this is one of the problems in talking about race and white supremacy in America, because, you see, we think too often in monolithic categories. There's never been a white supremacy without fighting against white supremacy. And that includes white brothers and sisters. There's a tradition from Ann Braden, from Miles Horton, you know, of Highlander Center. You got that wonderful picture of Rosa Parks. She was at Highlander Center four months before she was arrested, before she sat down on a bus in order to stand up for justice. Right there at Highlander Center under Miles Horton. Who was Miles Horton? A white brother who brought black folk and white folk together, went to Union Seminary, trained under Ryan Hole Niebuhr. He had cousins in the Ku Klux Klan. Wow. So his Thanksgiving dinners were very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true for a whole lot of white brothers and sisters <laughs> who fight against white supremacy. Yeah. And Braden, uh, 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 Rabbi Abraham Joshua, Heschel, Edward Zaid. You have a whole tradition of white brothers and sisters who've been fighting against white supremacy. You get it in the music. Beck Spiderbeck, he's sitting at the feet of Louis Armstrong. And he's a great artist. Louis is genius of geniuses, right? And that middle class brother from Iowa, you ask him about white supremacy. You ask Brubeck about white supremacy. You ask any of the, uh, uh, Paul Desmond, all of these folk who are connected to traditions in which black humanity, brown humanity is seen and affirmed. The reason I am so, uh, that, that's just amazing. I mean, start to finish, just, just the reason I'm, I'm in love with Cornell West, and I, I was obsessed with this podcast, and I went through everything he's done uh, ever, really, in this past weekend, is because the way he explains things. I've never thought about white su supremacy in that way, right? You think of white supremacy as its own secluded, oh, white people hate um, uh, everybody else. White people want to be the, have the privilege. White people have the privilege, or they don't even want it, but it, it's just intertwined into, into our uh, American way. But there's so much more to it. Like from the beginning when he explained, yes, it's all of this supremacy, all of the segregation. It doesn't matter if it's xenophobia, homophobia, um, white supremacy, racism. It doesn't matter what it is. It's usually tied to power and money. And exactly, and that's why when he brought it back to few, when people are obsessed and want to hold on to capitalism so much is because that's what we use. We use capitalism. And when I say we, I say the America, found, the founders of this great nation chose capitalism over feudalism because they wanted to break away from the kings and the queens. And it's just Cornell West explaining the reasons as to why white supremacy is so intertwined into our culture is because it is so intertwined into the power and the money struggle. 
the entertainment factor along with the knowledge that he has along with the way he speaks just makes everything so much better right it makes you understand more and makes you want to listen more it makes you want to look up these names and yes i google search maybe eight nine fifteen names just listening to this podcast so understand this is not something you can do while it's in the background while you're cleaning you need to put this on listen to it watch this podcast and tr- let it seep in understand it it's just a phenomenal from start to finish um he is an intellectual Let's continue on. There's more. There is more. No, but I mean, you've got these scholars of American studies. Uh, um, I mean, Nail Payne is one of the towering ones, but it goes all the way back to Brother Alexander and, and David David Rodinger and some others who've been talking about the way in which whiteness was created. Take, for example, an Irish brother who goes to Ellis Island. His people been dealing with 800 years of vicious British colonialism and imperialism, vicious t- attacks, mm-hmm. various famines that were in some ways created or at least enabled and so on. They get to New York and they're told that they're white. And they say, no, no, because we know the British are white and we're not British. Right. At all. At all. But then they say, yes, you are. Look at Brother West. Look at Jamal. Look at Letitia. Mm-hmm. Where are you going to go on the Jim Crow bus when you just get <laughs> off the boat from Ireland? Right. If you go to the front, you with vanilla folk. <laughs> you go to the back, you with the chocolate folk. What you going to do? And for our precious Jewish brothers and sisters, it was even more complicated. More complicated, right? Because they get there and they say, no, we're not with the Goya and we're not with the Gentiles. Y'all been oppressing us for 2,000 years. Pogroms, ghettos, holocausts vicious attacks and so on. But then they get there and say, well, are we going to be in the back with the black folk? Some of them did. You see, because you got a rich yeah. tradition of progressive Jews. You see, Noam Chomsky would have got back there. Stanley Aronowitz would have got back there with the black folk. You see what I mean? But you got some other Jewish folk like any other group. Well, we kind of lukewarm. Let's just kind of move back and forth. And then some of them want to assimilate completely, especially the highbrow German Jews we're actually white as well as the Gentiles. You're mm. in America now. Get beyond that old world prejudice. Mm. You say, well, you better check yourself because every Christian <laughs> civilization we know is shot through with Jewish hatred. Mm. Don't don't believe the hype. Sooner or later, it's going to be manifest. You see what I mean? And so in that way, you can see the, the discourse of whiteness, blackness, brownness, redness, and so forth becomes so, so deeply rooted in American law, American structures, American perceptions, and this is why the arts are so crucial because it's primarily in the music and in the arts where the breakdown of white supremacy begins to take place in the country. It's not so eloquent, so eloquent, and it helps you understand the mindset of immigrants coming to this country who have no, you know, innate hatred for someone that's from a different race. But when you come to a country where racism is the bedrock of the civilization, of the country, of the how-tos and the what-to-dos and the actual laws and regulations that are in place, you have to come and you have to make decision. decisions, right? You have to decide as a, as, as a white, Italian, Irish, Jew, whoever, when you come to America the first time and they tell you the back, you could either be black or, or you, can not, you can either not be white and sit in the back with the blacks or you can choose to be white and sit with the white folks up front. And then when you understand that, you understand that, no, it's not the human being. It's not the individual that's the problem. It's the system. And it's so it's it's perfectly stated. It is perfectly stated. Cornell West hits it out the goddamn park. And there's so much more. I could sit here and just listen to it over again. I'm re-watching it. Maybe this is my fifth time. But still, even though I've seen it maybe four, five, eight times so far, Every time I listen to it, I pick up a little more. You need to, you absolutely need to listen to the entire thing. Please go click the link down below and just just take an hour. It's actually a two-hour podcast. Take a couple of hours. Break it up if you have to, but let it soak in because it's so important. It is so important that we understand this. It's, It's, yes, 
Um, there are very few people, I believe, right? I'm, you guys know me. I love the Young Turks, right? But there are very few people, I believe, that has it in them to convey or, uh, what's it called? Have someone that is a Republican, have someone that is a conservative, see, t change their mindset and come, have them come over to the progressive side. I feel like Cornell West, the way he speaks, the, just the elegance, uh, the, the knowledge, all of the above is so succinct it's so efficient it's so beautifully put that it's hard to argue and on top of it you just want to listen more and you just end up agreeing with him because it makes logical sense it makes you know conventional sense historical sense all of it it just it's it's like it's streaming through him right it's beautiful it is wonderful there is more there is more